What's up guys, today we have an exciting video. We're going to install the actual Fitec unit. I did end up going with the master kit for the 800 horsepower Mean Street setup. Briefly, I kind of wanted to talk about why I picked that setup to begin with. And first of all was I already have ignition boxes and stuff that I'm going to put on the car. So I don't really need that much timing control. I don't plan on doing nitrous or anything like that. So really whatever my timing is, I can set it with the ignition boxes and it's going to be perfectly fine. So the 800 horsepower Mean Street does not have timing control, which is perfectly fine for my setup. The other thing is that this is compatible with using E85. So the fuel pump that comes in the master kit and everything included in this box is all compatible with race gas or E85, which those are the two types of fuel that I would like to switch back and forth from if needed. Depending on how far along I can get in the next couple of days, uh, we'll see about maybe even starting the car in this video, but we're going to start with installing everything and we have to remove all the old fuel lines and stuff like that, build new fuel lines. So there's going to be a lot of stuff in this video. So with that being said, I would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel, share this video, because there's just a lot of work that goes into making a video and just trying to give as much information as possible. All right, so we're gonna kind of start by briefly going over what's inside the box. Obviously the most important part of this whole thing is the actual throttle body itself. So as you can see, looks really good. Everything is built really well, feels really solid. You have your connections on the back here. They're all like a plug and play. You have your feed and return lines. And then this model itself is the 800 horsepower one. It is a 30008, I believe is the part number for it. Again, all this stuff I will link to in the description. I did buy it from Summit Racing. Another thing in the kit is the handheld. And a lot of the complaints that I've seen on these was that the plug was like two separate types of plugs that were like headphone jacks almost. And as you can see, it looks like they have corrected that. Let me see if my camera will focus. There you go. So it's more like a USB-C type plug right there. So it looks like whatever the main complaint was from the old setups has been corrected in this setup. I'm just kind of briefly going through what we have to put on, but once we get into actually installing it on the car, obviously we'll go more in depth with it. This appears to be like a temp sensor. This appears to be an O2 sensor bung kit. You have your main wiring harness, some more plugs that looks like for the handheld. You've got your little fuses and stuff inside this little fuse box on there. So that's pretty nice, nice weather tight seal it feels like. And then we have the actual oxygen sensor itself. Something that didn't come with the kit that you're gonna need is this filter. This is a 100 micron filter and that's gonna go in line up to the throttle body. The last thing is some hoses and some AN fittings. That way we can get the fuel back from the tank up to the throttle body and then a return line back. So there's plenty of hose to do that and that was actually from amazon.com. So I will put a link in the description to Amazon. It's good quality fuel line and it's rated for E85 or gasoline. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is how to mount this oxygen sensor. The placement of this oxygen sensor is super important because you want a little bit of an angle downward. If you've got an angle down here like this, all the moisture inside this exhaust system is going to collect at the tip of the O2 sensor and it's gonna completely trash it. So you wanna mount this about like that and then make sure that it's not going to interfere with any kind of like shift linkages or anything like that. So as you can see, we've got the header just loosely laying down there. We're going to take that out and mount this just before the flange. All right, guys, I just want to give you a quick close up of this. So basically, you're just going to drill a 7 8 hole and then you've got your little bung right there. There's a little gasket that seals it and then you just put the two hose clamps on there, snug them all the way up and you're good. All right guys, so now we're gonna get the header mounted back into the car. We're gonna get our new battery cable taken off of the starter, and then we'll just kind of set it aside for right now. We have not coated our block off plate with our POR15 like we did on the firewall, but we'll get that taken care of. So we're just gonna get all of our wiring out of the way here, and we're going to get ready to put our header back in. And I've got new header bolts for that, so I'll get those, but we'll cut to a time lapse and get this thing mounted back in the car.
All right, guys, so we have the firewall all coated with the POR15. We have our power running through there. And then up here, we're gonna go ahead and start by removing the mechanical fuel pump and all of the fuel lines that go with it. We're gonna get all that stuff removed, uh, get it ready to start building our AN hoses. So we're gonna go ahead and hop to the time-lapse again. Alright guys, so as you can see, I've got a chrome block off plate down there just to block off where the fuel pump was at. So that's done. I have all of the factory fuel lines cut. I just have to pull them the rest of the way out of there. So they're ready to be removed. Alright guys, so back here we have our fuel hoses. I went ahead and stuck a couple ends on the fuel hose. They're plugged into the fuel pump here. So the only thing left to get this fuel pump completely finished off is just to make a vent hose, which is super easy. And then we need to run power to it, which we're gonna obviously throw it under the car and make sure that we are able to bring this gas tank down. We wanna leave plenty of room because if we go to drop this tank and we can't get to the hoses, then we're gonna have some serious problems. So we need to make sure that there's plenty of room so that we can drop the tank all the way down, then take the hoses off and actually maintenance this thing if I have to. Also, I will go over how I assemble these hoses. Uh, one of them is a PTFE hose. The other one is just a regular rubber hose that is rated for E85 and gasoline and all that stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and get this positioned under the car, get it ready to be thrown in, but we're gonna leave it down on the ground because there's still a lot that we have to do to make sure that we have enough length to drop the tank all the way. All right, and again, over here on your fuel sending unit, I just ran a line from here over to the ground terminal of the fuel pump, and then you've got your positive terminal of the fuel pump, and that's obviously where your power is gonna go. All right, we've got the gas tank slid down underneath the car, and we've started connecting some of the wires and stuff, just mainly the ground wire. We do have the fuel gauge wire running down through there, through the trunk pan and that's protected by a rubber grommet. All right, before we move along, we're gonna go ahead and pop the carburetor off, get all the linkages and stuff like that removed, and then we will replace that with the EFI unit. Bolts down just like your normal carburetor would. So we're gonna go ahead and make that switch now. All right guys, so I've got the Phytech unit on. The next order of business here is just to switch over the linkages for your throttle and your kickdown lever and everything. Get that all put onto this assembly. I'm just gonna try to take what I had on my old carburetor, swap it over to this assembly, and it should be perfectly fine. You're gonna hook your throttle linkage up and you're gonna to check to make sure that you have full travel whenever you go in and press the gas pedal. Obviously that's super important if you wanna maximize your horsepower. So we're gonna go in the car, make sure we have full travel. This will probably more than likely need a little bit of adjustment, but we'll figure that out here in a second. All right guys, so at the moment, the throttle adjustment looks pretty good actually. The butterflies are all the way open whenever we press it down. There's no slop and gas pedal or anything like that. So I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, obviously once we go testing it and everything, we might have to fine tune it, but. All right, so we're just getting the hoses in the back hooked up. Uh, the one on the far right, the bigger size one is going to be for your PCV. So I've got that one hooked up now. I just cut some hose from the fuel line that we're using. I had some extra left over. And then I just ran that to the nipple on the back on the right side, so. So the smaller one on the top left side, is going to be for your vacuum advance. So you're just gonna run this over here and fit it over top of that nipple there. The bottom one here is the vacuum for your brake booster. So just gonna slide this hose going from the booster to the back of the EFI unit here. All right, so I installed the new water temp sensor which comes in the kit. And then I ran the harness off of the front here, straight down there. Real easy, just plugs right in. 
So that's done. Now that we got that connected, we're gonna go through and just start figuring out how we're gonna wire all this stuff in. All right, so I've got the little fuse box mounted on the firewall and I've got the power cord running in with our battery cable and that is gonna go all the way under the carpet back to the battery. In that same section of the harness is going to be the power for the fuel pump. So that is also going in and along the carpet back to the trunk area where the fuel pump's gonna be at. The wiring is pretty straightforward. They're just all plug and play connections. The only thing that you have to worry about is plugging in this connector and then running power to your fan and stuff like that, which we'll get to here in a second. Obviously you have to worry about getting power to your fuel pump and then power from the battery. We've got this plug right here. I believe that this goes to the oxygen sensor, so we'll put that down to the oxygen sensor. And then you've got this little section of wire that is gonna to go to things like your tack signal, your key, uh, it says AC in and then fan. That's what this little wiring harness right here is for. So again, that plugs right into that connector right there. I'm not kidding you, the wiring for this so far has been super easy. I think the only thing that we're gonna to have to figure out is the fan because the electric fan, actually the signal that runs to the electric fan from the throttle body is actually a ground signal. So that's gonna to go to the ground terminal of the relay, I believe. So we're finishing up on everything here. We have power to the fuel pump. We have power to the whole system all the way back to the battery. We're working on the fan setup right now, which is probably one of the more confusing parts to understand. So I'm gonna take you to the instructions, which makes it super simple. All right, so the fan is hooked up through this relay. I already had one of these because I am currently working off of an electric fan right now. So I already have one of these. On the bottom though, each of those terminals are labeled with different numbers. All you have to do is come over to the instructions and see where each of these wires are going. So terminal number 30 goes fused to the battery positive. So you just one by one go through and make all of those connections and you're good to go. The biggest thing on all this is to make sure that you're using some kind of like heat shrink connector. I personally really like these. You have some butt connectors in here. You've got some terminal connectors like I used on this relay. We still have to finish that obviously, but these are really nice. I bought this kit on Amazon and it has ring terminals. It has the spade connectors, all that kind of stuff. So very good kit and I highly recommend it because the heat shrink is going to give you the most protected connection. I'll leave a link for this kit in the description below so you guys can go check it out. Also, I've made all of my power connections back here at the fuel pump. The only thing I have to do is just ground it. So I'm not gonna do that until we have everything installed. For you guys running a kill switch, make sure that this power is actually run straight to the battery terminal. This has to have power all the time. That way it keeps all your data and stuff in there. All right guys, so before we put the gas tank back up in the straps, we're just gonna make sure that the fuel pump will cycle. So I have the little display down here, which is kind of temporarily hooked up, but key on should make the fuel pump cycle. So we should be able to hear that from inside the car. That's what that little whining noise is. So we are good. It is cycling fuel like it's supposed to. So now we can go ahead, mount the tank up back in the car, and then we'll move forward with the rest of the installation. All right, unfortunately I had to do something I didn't want to, but the vent line is running up through here near the filler neck, so everything's fine there. And as you can see, I had to cut a hole in my floor of the trunk that I just fixed up, but it's fine. Stuff like this happens, so we're just going to 
uh, make some kind of like block off plate or something to just cover that up. Um, and then the other benefit of course will be that you can access the fuel pump and service it from the trunk. Instead of having to drop the fuel tank, take off all the lines and stuff like that, you can just access it from right here. The reason I had to do this was because the clearance between the fuel pump and the trunk floor was so limited and it just wouldn't mount properly. So I had to just make a little notch there, cut that section out. It is what it is. I spent so much time getting this looking right, but you know what? things happen. So the last thing to do is to finish the fuel lines. So we're just going to get a fuel feed with an inline filter. We'll show you how we do that. And then we've got a return line also that's sitting down here. So we're going to get those routed up to the throttle body and then we should be able to start this thing tonight. All right guys, so I wanted to show you how I build these lines. So you've got your little hose end here and this just threads together. And in the middle there, there's a little brass or a ferrule type thing. That's going to go on the end of the hose, but first you need to put this piece on. The only thing you need to worry about is making sure that you get all of the braided line out of the way so you can get this hose end on there. So you just kind of have to cram all the frayed out wires into this fitting, which is kind of the biggest pain of this whole thing. And it just kind of presses over the end like that. So as you can see, I'm just barely getting enough to where this little fitting is going to fit over there. There we go. And then we're gonna make sure it's fully seated by pressing it down onto our vise. All right, so now that's all the way seated on there, you're gonna take the other end here. I like to just kind of clamp this down in the vise. I'm not going crazy tight, just enough to give me a third hand. And then you're going to start working this end into this side. I've personally found that using a socket and just kind of tapping the end into the hose like this, as you can see, it's fully seated there. And then you're going to take this end, push it over the frayed ends, and then you can start threading this whole thing on there. All right, so now that we've got that to start threading there, we're just going to stick this down into the bench vise and then just snug it up. Alright guys, so we've gotten everything installed. Now I think that we're ready to fire it up. But before we go ahead and try to fire it up, we're going to make sure that we hear the fuel pump priming. We're going to make sure we have no fuel leaks, at least on the feed line. And then we won't know on the return line until the system is going, obviously. So we are going to turn the key on for the first time and hopefully have power to all this stuff. We're going to go ahead and see if the fuel pump will prime real quick. So as soon as the key comes on, you should hear the pump prime. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll make sure there's no fuel leaks in that line. Uh, we'll go in here to initial setup, engine setup. And you wanna make sure that your engine cubic inches are set here. We have 355, so we're gonna go ahead and set that on 355. Hit send to the ECU. We'll see if it'll start with the jump pack on it. If not, it may have to sit here for a little bit. So we'll figure that out here in a second. Definitely dead. We're gonna let it sit here and charge for a little bit, then we'll try to start it. Ah, almost there. All right, so it's been a several day fiasco, but I did get a new battery. It is an AGM style battery. So I think it's just gonna be a lot better performing battery, especially for the setup that I have. All right guys, so I went ahead and ordered a high torque starter from Summit Racing. I'll put the part number down in the description if you wanna check it out, but very good price for a high torque starter. So we are going to be installing that in here. Uh, whenever I was cranking it over, the starter started to smoke and stuff. So 
there's definitely some kind of issue going on with the starter. So this kind of stuff obviously happens, but we are hoping we don't have to take too much stuff apart to get the starter installed. Um, at the very most, we'd have to take the headers off, which would require us to take this back panel off again, but we're gonna figure it all out. All right guys, so yesterday my audio cut out whenever I first started this thing up. Didn't realize it until I went to go edit the video. So basically I've reset the handheld here and all I'm gonna do is just go to the initial setup and I will even bring the camera closer here to show you that there's nothing saved on here. This is just a fresh start. We're gonna start all over again. All right guys, so just to show you, I'm gonna go to the initial setup, engine setup, it's set on 382, so that's not what engine setup I have here. I'm going to go to 355 and send that to the ECU. We'll go with a number two cam. Rev limit, we'll bring that down to like 6,500 for right now. And the idle RPM, we'll put it on 900. All right, so we're gonna cycle the fuel pump one time and try to start this thing. Take my mic to the back of the car so you can hear what it's like back here. All right guys, so there you have it. We got a pretty good first start on the Fitech. Well, it's not technically the first start because I had all this done last night, but again, the audio cut out. But anyways, um, full transparency here. Um, the only issue that I had with this whole, and it wasn't even an issue with the system. It was just an issue with the way that I wired it up. The instructions clearly state that the power wire is supposed to go all the way back directly to the battery. Instead, I thought that I would shortcut it and hook it up right back here where my kill switch is. And obviously there was a big voltage drop. It would reset the handheld and I was having all kinds of issues. But the moment that I did exactly what the instructions said, like I should have done in the first place, it fired right up and everything was fine. The first startup after that was exactly like what you just seen there, just changing the settings on the handheld and then starting it up everything ran perfectly fine. It was honestly outstanding. One final tip that I would give anyone is make sure that your engine grounding straps are there because that was creating another issue. So we had the starter issue, the battery issue, uh, grounding was pretty weak. So we had to come up with some better grounds. And as soon as all that stuff was figured out, it was fine. Uh, this car's needed a new battery for a while. Um, it's needed a new starter for a while. Replacing both of those components and it started right away. All right guys, so even given the issues that we've had in this video, um, the install was fairly straightforward. There was a lot of new components that were tested in this video and they all seem to be working perfectly. I did get another question on the wiring harness that I used for this. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. The wiring harness at this point has shown to be pretty good. I don't have the uh, tail lights or anything like that hooked up because I have to make that custom lighting, but, but I would definitely recommend the wiring harness. Again, all the things used in this video will be listed down in the description. All the links for the products will be listed down in the description. And I'll be sure to share my thoughts on the Fitech unit as we go along. So far, ease of installation was really good. First startup was really good. Um, the instructions were really good, even though I didn't follow them. Um, and that's what was causing my issues. So once I followed the instructions that they provided, again, perfectly fine startup. So there's gonna be some tuning that's required in getting this thing road ready and the throttle response and everything like that. So we are going to make a separate video on tuning that kind of stuff later. We do have a ton of projects coming up, especially since the weather's starting to warm up. So stay tuned. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next video.